This time is not an electric scooter, this time is Eleglide M2 electric bike, sent to me by geekbuying.com. Let's get out there. As always, we start the reviews from the speed test. I have unlocked the maximum speed, which is 32 kilometers per hour on the bicycle's speedometer. You can unlock it either by using the app or going through the parameters on the dashboard, which we can show you later. And the maximum speed is around 30 kilometers per hour, even though the dashboard will tell you it's 32. And 30 kilometers per hour, in my honest opinion, it's a really good speed, especially knowing that it's not a limit, it's just a speed to which the bike will support your pedaling. If you want to go faster, you can pedal up faster, it doesn't restrict you in any ways, and you will find yourself going pretty fast compared to the traffic, especially going uphill. The bike has three sprockets at the front and eight at the rear, making it a 24 gear bike. And I found myself mainly riding on one of the hardest ones, just because there is enough torque from the start to accelerate even on the hardest gear. And then you have the yeah good gear for getting more speed. And the gears were shifting pretty well after I have adjusted a little adjustment knob at the shifter. And since then I never had any issues shifting up or down on this bike. As I kept my older Eleglite bike, which is Eleglite T1, I decided to check if the torque or acceleration is different as the manufacturer claims that they increased it up to 55 Nm. 3, 2, two one, 1, go! Stop! Stop. So here we go, we have a scientific proof of our hypothesis, Eleglite M2 actually has a better acceleration and reaches more speed even though the battery is only half charged compared to the white one with a fully charged battery pack. So the torque is actually improved and acceleration is actually even better. Another massive improvement compared to the white bike is the brakes. The white one has uh, cable brakes, now these are both hydraulic front and back disc brakes. And if I need to stop quickly, I can do that basically in no time. It's a really, really good brake performance on this bike and a massive improvement compared to the old one. There is a phone app for the bike where you don't have to register a user, you can just skip the registration, which is great. And then for me, it connected first try on my iPhone without any struggle whatsoever. 
The app controls are really simple and straightforward. They allow you to change different settings and to see the basic statistics of your bike. And while we look at it, you might notice that I've done 42 kilometers by using only 34% of the battery. One thing I struggle to review on this bike is the battery capacity. I don't know if you can see, but it, I still have two bars out of five. And it's maybe day four of me riding the bike for my personal needs, wherever I want and wherever I need, always full speed. And the thing why it's hard to review or hard to judge is because it's a bike, it's not a scooter. So it really depends how much pedaling you put in. And if I turn it off completely and I just keep pedaling, I can go with this bike on a completely decent speed. I actually don't feel that it's an electric bike. It's a bit heavier, normal standard bike. I can just pedal along and consume zero power. So even if I run out of battery, it's not the end of the deal. And my judgment for the battery capacity is that it's sufficient. The 15 amp hour battery pack can be taken off and installed back again on the bike. If you want to secure it, you have a key with which you can lock it up. Then you can slide it off. And it's pretty firmly sits here on the bottom tube of your bike. A word of caution, if you drop your bike on the side, meaning on the handlebars, you can actually break the battery mount off. I have done that at least on two of my older bikes. I was thinking so far so good. This bike is fun to ride in the city. It has decent torque motor. It has huge battery pack, great brakes. It's easy to control. So for the city rides, it actually works pretty well. Now, the shape of the bike is a mountain bike. It's a hardtail mountain bike shape. So can you actually run it on some little trails and have fun in the forest? We are about to find out. In my opinion, the bike in the forest acted as expected, meaning it's always fun to have this extra assistance on a flat flowing trails. And of course, it's not good for making big jumps, gaps or landings, because for that purpose, you have full suspension mountain bikes where probably front fork cost as much as this entire bike. Having said that, I had a lot of fun flowing on little trails or just riding some smaller little obstacles which I think this bike is perfectly fit for. So the front oil forks, they won't give you like fantastic suspension, but they are refurbishable, you can reassemble them. The tires are also something in between the mountain bike and city tire. So of course you can see the target audience for this bike is masses of people. And I think as a universal bike for a daily or a weekend rider, it does a pretty good job. Probably one of the most important things for me that after having fun in the forest for a couple of hours, nothing came loose. The battery is still rock solid on the frame. When I say rock solid, there is slight movement, but it, you will always have some with these halon battery types. Nothing fell apart. None of the bolts have loosened up. And that has just been my experience with Eleg Light bikes. I hope this bike will do as well as the T1. On the day of recording, the bike retails for 899 euros on geekbuying.com and you will probably find the coupon if you scroll down on the video description below. And for that price, you're actually getting hydraulic disc brakes, you're hitting the suspension with the lockout. I wouldn't call it premium, but you have a decent suspension with the lockout. You have actually quite a large 15 amp hour battery pack and you have pretty powerful motor with 55 Newton meters of torque. On top of that, the LCD display is really simple, 
easy to control and easy to understand. And if you are wondering about the sizes or measures, you actually have all the measurement table on geekbuying.com website link in the description below. But of course, as anything on this planet will have some downsides, this bike is not an exception. And the first of them I noticed when assembling the bike and putting it together. It's missing the washer. You need to install washers on the pedals. I can't see if there are washers for pedals somewhere. When you put the pedal in, if you don't install a washer like this, this way, and this part will screw Come on, camera. Then this corner will screw into the crank arm and it will get stuck. So when you want to take the pedals out, you will be in trouble. Unfortunately, with my bike, there came no washers for pedals. The bike comes with almost full set of tools for assembling it. So you will get three different sizes Allen keys. None of them will fit to tighten up, tighten up the headlight. But real disappointment is with the rear light as it's not included and you only get this plastic reflector instead. And having this twist throttle is actually amazing because you can adjust how much power you want to deliver. So I can either go very slowly or if I turn it a bit more, I will go a bit more faster and I can go full speed if I want. But the problem is that as soon as I start pedaling, the bike immediately delivers full speed. If I, even if I pedal just a little bit, I get full speed push from the bike. And there is no way I can reduce that. The only thing I can reduce is the level here. So I can reduce it to level two, for example. Then now as I'm riding 17 kilometers per hour, it won't do anything. Because at speed 2, it's not providing me any power right now, so it's just me pedaling now. So if I put it on level 2 and I'm riding 17 or 16 per hour, I can't use the throttle either, so it does nothing. Because the levels here, uh, you have 5 levels. What they do, they just limit your maximum speed to which the scooter, is, uh, to which your bike is providing the power, that's it. What I would love to have is I would love to have an opportunity to limit how much watts the scooter provide when you start pedaling. So for example, I want to exercise and ride 25 kilometers per hour myself. So I set the speed limit on 25, but I only allow scooter to provide, I don't know, let's say 100 watts. So it just helps me a bit, but I have to do the work myself. Uh, otherwise, I can either use it as a moped mode so I can add a little bit with the twist throttle, but then I can't pedal because as soon as I start pedal, it will go full bananas, full speed mode. So that's probably the biggest downside that I know on uh, these electric bikes. And it was exactly the same with the Eleglide T1. The screen on Eleglide T1 was a little bit better as well. I like that more than this one. So all in all, for 899 euros, you get a pretty neat looking bike with all the features that you need for your daily commuting or little for restaurants. And, you know, that will help you climb the little hills without putting too much effort in it and so on. And knowing how much bikes cost these days, I would say this is a pretty good price for this piece of kit. If it lasts as well as my uh, old Eleglide T1, I think it's really worth the money because I was buying normal bikes, which are not electric, for more, for more money than this. I hope that you found this review useful if you're looking for an electric bike. If you have any more further questions, drop them in the comments down below. And I'll see you in the next video, guys. Cheers! What's up, guys? You like the bike? Think it's a good bike?